Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Hotfix. Today I want to talk about the situation gas powered games Wildman finds itself in on Kickstarter. This is very desperate. So I think the best place to start off with is the actual video blog Chris Taylor put out a few hours ago. So let's go into that. Hey everyone, this is the wackiest video update you're ever going to see. Today we laid off a, a substantial number of the team. Folks are going to ask what is going on? Why is he doing this? The reason was is that if I ran this team through the entire Kickstarter campaign and it fails to fund, then I have to let everyone go, shut the company down, no one gets any unpaid PTO or severance or anything. And that's that. And that, I decided, was not worth it. It's one thing for me to risk and gamble this company that, frankly, is something that I've been building for 15 years. Well, this May, it'll be 15 years. And I, I feel comfortable with that because I've done it in the past many times. But this time is different. I really, really felt like it was a crazy idea to gamble in this economy and gamble with the... The, the people here who are the most talented and loyal people to play a card game with their livelihoods is not smart. So I made a very, very tough decision. But I have another tough decision to make, and that's why I'm here on this video update. Now that the team has been laid off, should I continue the campaign to see if the numbers do improve and hire them back at the end of the campaign, if they still want to come back and if they haven't found jobs, or do I shut the campaign down tonight or tomorrow and call it done? So help me make a tough decision. Vote with your comments. We'll tabulate them. We kill the campaign, or we keep it going. It's up to you. Thank you. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is read a quote from an unreleased PC Gamer interview with Chris Taylor. Now, PC Gamer have released this quote, but they haven't actually released the, the remainder of this interview, which I am kind of looking forward to seeing. But I do want to read this quote off. So here we go. No, right now we have one other project that's wrapping up. So when it comes to staffing and team sizes, unfortunately, our headcount has to float with the revenue that can come in to pay for them. So, under the model of that wrapping up, and this being modestly funded, we're probably going to be a 20-person company. Right now we're at 50, last year we were 80. So there's been a reduction. It's sad to say, it's sad to have to say goodbye to people, but they're talented people and they get jobs and they move on and they do other exciting things. We just don't know where the funding on this is going to land. This is obviously in relation to Wildman. If we're so lucky as to get the funding, so if it comes in at the minimum or comes close in at a multiple that allows us to have a greater team size and frankly to run the project for a longer period of time, add more features, so we don't really know yet. There's a lot of unknowns. Okay, so Let's just take a look at this. So let's just take a look at the facts. So according to Chris Taylor, CPG, let's see, GPG, CPG, what the hell? Gas Powered Games, GPG, have uh, effectively laid off almost all of the staff and there are not many people left. Now this hasn't been 100% confirmed, but I've been seeing sources which are indicating that there's not many people left now, maybe three or four people who are actually <laughs> effectively waiting on, on Kickstarter to see if it'll actually be a success. I mean, that's obviously a bad situation. Now, Gas Power Games worked on Age of Empires Online. They obviously lost that contract. Now, I'm guessing Age of Empires Online wasn't exactly that popular. It was a fairly decent game, but not popular enough for Microsoft to continue to employ the likes of Gas Power Games to keep content being produced. So obviously they've, uh, they've come away from that. Now, I'm guessing they've had difficulty trying to find funding for Wildman because 
you know, they have gameplay footage available for Wildman. I've, I've seen it on the Kickstarter. I'm guessing a lot of people have actually seen that as well. Now, this isn't something which they've just quickly produced. You can obviously see, you know, they've put effort into this. You've got things like a, a Wildman logo. You've got a lot of concept art and all this stuff. So you can see they've put effort into this. And they've obviously, well, I believe they have, approached other people looking for funding. And they haven't been able to do it. So they're kind of getting now a little bit desperate. <laughs> it's almost like... The desperado element starting to come and it's like, oh no, what do we do? Nobody actually wants to pick this game up. Now, why would people not really want to fund or pick up a game like Wildman? Well, it's an action RPG game and you've got Diablo 3, you've got Torchlight 2, you've got Grim Dawn coming out this year, you've got Path of Exile almost released. It's a very strange... Uh, to me, it seems very strange that they would even contemplate going into that market. It's, it's very strange. So obviously they've, they've had difficulty, or I believe they've had difficulty trying to find the funding. So is this a desperate move? Is this literally a, a desperate, last, embarrassing stand for gas-powered games to try and make some sort of money? If this is the only idea they've got, they're, they're trying to be new, they're trying to innovate, but it's not working out. And so look, what we're going to do, we're just going to gamble, we're going to put everything on Kickstarter and we're going to see what happens. Now, what I will say is most big Kickstarter well, big kick-started games, they tend to get funded really fast. If you look at things like Planetary Annihilation, and we'll come back onto that later, that got funded really quick. And then it's starting, you know, then it's hitting its stretch goals and it's making even more money and all the rest of it. Wildman has had a very slow start, but it has seen a bit of a boost in the last couple of hours since this announcement, which we'll get onto that as well, because I'm quite cynical when it comes to these things. So that, you know, it doesn't take a, a, a brain surgeon or a rocket scientist to work out that it probably isn't going to make it unless they do something pretty drastic, which is kind of what they have done. Now, it needs a major marketing boost, a major, major marketing boost to get this back into the forefront, to get this all over Reddit, to get this all over every news blog, to get everybody talking about it. I mean, hell, I'm talking about it now, but to get everybody talking about it. So this is where it comes to the... Uh, I, I direct my gaze onto this whole, oh god, we've had to lay off all of the staff. I can't believe it. This is so bad. Now, you either look at it one of two ways. You say, this is a very poor stunt to try and drum up media interest in the game. The way it's been delivered, it does look massively desperate to me. It's like, um, you know, the, Chris Taylor he clearly is emotional in the video. Oh, you know, it's, this is, he's basically saying this is the last chance I've got and then. 15 years of work go under now obviously I can sympathize and say yeah that's you know it's obviously bad but is it really the best thing to be putting this type of information out onto the on, on onto the internet onto your Kickstarter campaign when you've got people who are actually backing you for money this is sort of like the um, you know what kind of trust do you have what kind of trust will they have in you if you can't even keep the company together sort of thing and you've got um, like it's, I, I don't know, I'm finding this very irritating because to me this is like, it, it really, it just stinks of desperation and I don't like that and I don't like, uh, it, it's almost like, it's not begging for money but I mean I guess you could almost, that's a, a quite a strong uh, view as well, you could almost kind of say it, it's like he literally is saying please give us money, which is pretty bad. The other way of looking at it is... They actually are a company on the edge of, of collapse. You know, they're, they're right on the brink, teetering on the brink. They're going to drop off, and he is doing everything he can to keep that company going. But there is no way you could honestly say to me, this is not something they would have seen happening. In fact, I guess what I, I, I guess you, there is the third way you could look at this. Gas powered games know they're going to um, resize, yeah? This has been planned for some time. They're going to drop down to a very small team, almost like an indie company, and then they're going to work on games like Wildman. Yeah? And they're going to fund them through Kickstarter. So they've already planned to get rid of all this staff. But then a very uh, a, a last minute, oh, you know what? We can actually make more uh, publicity for Wildman if we make a video saying, oh, God, it's so bad we've had to lay people off. Now, I guess that's a third way of looking at it. But again, that is kind of cynical like the first way. But, you know, I, I have to put these arguments forward because these are arguments that are formulating in my mind. You know, I can't... I can't lie to myself, this is what I see, so I'm, I'm just saying what I see. Now, I think, I think, I really honestly believe Gas Power Games, and especially probably Chris Taylor himself, 
are really, really kicking themselves. Like, I can't believe we never came up with planetary annihilation. I mean, for God's sake, they made Supreme Commander, yeah? They could have easily have done, uh, maybe even gone for a Supreme Commander 3, or even a different take like planetary uh, annihilation on Kickstarter. That was wildly successful, wildly successful, yeah? I've seen quotes off Chris where he said things like, I don't think going massive on different battlefields, different planes of, uh, you know, fighting in space on a planet and all the rest of it is the way to go. And I'm thinking, no, that's not the Chris Taylor I remember. The Chris Taylor, he always wanted things massive. He wanted things big, big, impressive. Look at this. Look at Total Annihilation. Look at Supreme Commander. These were it, like taking games to the next level. And that's what Planetary Annihilation is doing. And I honestly think that if he sort of jumped on that and thought, you know what, I'm going to put a Kickstarter together. It's going to be... Supreme Commander 3, but it's going to be like Planetary Annihilation, you know, in space or on a scale never before seen. He would have funded that really quick. It, it would have literally been funded because I can say that now with the power of hindsight because I've seen what Planetary Annihilation has, has managed to achieve. And obviously he's sitting there thinking, shit, I cannot believe this. They have literally took my franchise off me, took it to the next level, the natural evolution of it, and look at them. And my company's struggling. I need to do something. And that's sort of like... I honestly think that all, all this argument that was put forward of, yeah, we want to move on, we want to try something new, is kind of a bit of a bit of a load of crap because really, deep down, you know that his passion is large-scale RTS games. So I guess I'll throw this over to you guys. What do you think? Do you think I've put a good uh, structured argument together there? Obviously, I don't have Kiri off in this video, so I've had to sort of go solo, but... You know, you can look at it very cynically and say this is just a publicity stunt to get more eyes onto the Kickstarter page because they know at that time they were not going to make the Wildman Kickstarter target at all. It was going to fail short. And would that have spelled the end for the company? So is this a move out of desperation? Is this a calculated marketing move? I don't know. And again, like you know I've kind of got some issues with Kickstarter, but... I think like this kind of again highlights the fact that it sort of is becoming a bit of a farce at times, Kickstarter is, and, and this is just another fiasco, and there'll probably be loads more fiascos which will eventually start cropping up probably throughout this year and into the future anyway because that's more and more people are starting to jump on Kickstarter after they see a success thinking, you know what, I can replicate that. So I don't know guys. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. Subscribe to the channel. And yeah, toodaloo, people. Toodaloo.